Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this is another problem-solving lecture uh, about combinatorics. And as usually, I, I would like to point um, a very important aspect of these problem-solving lectures. Um, for educational purposes, you really have to go to um, the unizor.com website and uh, first check the notes for this lecture which contain basically the, the problems themselves. Then there is an answer, so you can basically check your own skills, try to solve the problem yourself, and then look at the answer. It should actually be the same. Um, now, the formula might, be, might look a little differently, and that's what I will actually talk about uh, during this lecture a couple of times, but the result should be the same. It doesn't really matter how the formula looks like. Uh, it should be identical. Um, so, um, I do encourage you to, to do this type of preliminary um, uh, problem solving first and then go to this lecture. Now, um, another very important aspect of uh, combinatorics problems is, as I was saying before a couple of times, it's very difficult to check really whether your answer is correct or not because um, there is no uh, easy way to check, like for instance, if you uh, solve the equation, for instance, you just substitute it and, and check if you have identity, right? Here, you come up with some formula which you know signifies something, but you you don't really know whether it's correct or not. And the best way to uh, to check these answers which you obtain is through some kind of other way to come up with uh, the same result. So, if you can approach the same problem from two different um, directions and come up with the same result, that, that's, that's the best check you can, you can get. Now, in, in cases when you have to count certain things, and that's what combinatorics is all about, you have to count something. There are two ways to count. Um, you can count all the objects which belong to certain, to, to, to certain category, and basically, you know, come up with an answer. Or, alternatively, you can count all the objects which do not belong, which are excluded from this category. So, if the total number of objects is known, and you know how much is excluded, then you can get, basically, what's in that particular set. And that's probably the best way to, to do this, uh, these problems. Try to approach it from both ways, inclusive and, and exclusive ways. And that's what I will try to, to show you. Okay, problem number one. There is an n-sided convex polygon. Let's make it more something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six different vertices. All right, now, what we can do is we can build triangles based on uh, the vertices of this polygon. For instance, this one. This is a triangle, right? Now, this is another triangle. Let me use another color. Okay, and there are some other triangles. Now, I'm interested only in the triangles which do not have the side which coincides with the sides of, uh, with, with any one of the sides of the polygon. So, this triangle is not good because this side coincides with the polygon side. The red triangle is good. So, I would like to count only these triangles which do not have common sides with the polygon. Okay. So, how can I count them? Well, let's just do it again with two different um, ways. First, let me try to, to do the exclusion method. So, I would like to exclude from all the triangles those which have common sides. Okay? Now, how can we do it? The number of triangles which I can form using n different 
uh, vertices of, of the polygon is obviously a number of combinations from n to 3. So that's my initial number of all triangles. Now let me exclude those which have common sides with the polygon. Well, uh, let's assume that n is greater than 3. So we have more more than three points actually, more than three vertices. Now, if n is greater than three, obviously I cannot have my three sides uh, coincide. Three sides of the triangle coincide with three sides of the polygon. So, um, it can be either two sides of the triangle are coinciding or just one side. Okay, so let's start with two sides coinciding. Now, if two sides of the triangle coincide with the sides of the polygon, that must be this. Let me just give you an example of a triangle which has two sides coinciding. It's this one. Right? So you have one vertex and two sides of the polygon immediately um, adjacent to this vertex and the one which connects these two sides. So these are the only type of triangles when three points are all neighbors to each other in the polygon. Um, when these uh, triangles are, are possible to construct. Now how many of these triangles exist? Well, each triangle such uh, is uh, uniquely determined by the vertex of the polygon. So on every vertex of the polygon, I can have a triangle like that. This, 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 etc. Right? So the number of these triangles, which have two sides coinciding with the sides of the polygon, is exactly n. And I have to subtract it. Now let me wipe this out, because the next one will be slightly more complicated. Now, I have again a polygon, and now I'm interested only in triangles which have only one side coinciding with. So that's something like this. This is the triangle. One side coincides. Now, which one can coincide? Well, obviously there are as many sides as many the polygon has. So it's n. And what kind of uh, different triangles we can construct with this side coinciding with the polygon? Well, it's any one except immediately adjacent. Because immediately adjacent will have two sides. Right? This is two sides uh, coinciding. Triangle which coincides with two sides, but we have already counted them. So we need to exclude not only uh, these two vertices which are uh, forming my, 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 uh, my side from which, which is coinciding with, with the triangle, but also its immediate two neighbors. So I have to exclude four points for the third vertex of the triangle. So I have to multiply number of sides by an n minus 4. That's number of vertices where the third vertex of a triangle can be positioned so the triangle has only one side coinciding with the polygon, right? So that's basically it. That's the answer. Fine. Good enough. Actually, it can be done um, explicitly basically, uh, uh, including, uh, uh, inclusively, I, would, uh, I should say, in, uh, explicitly calculate all uh, triangles which are supposed to be included into this category. It's a little bit longer logic, and I um, basically presented it in, in the notes for this lecture. I don't want really to uh, spend a lot of time on this right now, but there is another way. Now, here I have a total count of uh, triangles and excluded those which are not supposed to belong. Now, in that other logic which I presented in the notes on this unisor.com site, 
um, I count explicitly all the triangles which are supposed to be included in this category. And I do suggest you to basically go through the notes and, uh, and see what, what exactly the other logic is. It's a little bit lengthier, that's why I don't want to present it here. So let's go to the next problem. And what's interesting is obviously that it presents exactly the same result, but in a slightly different formulation, so to speak. So it's the same, basically, um, formula, but positioned slightly differently. In any case, let's go on. On the plane, we have n straight lines. And each line has k points on it. So we have n lines, k points on each. Now, let's just make some reasonable assumption. Lines are not parallel. No three lines are intersecting in the same, uh, at the same point. And these k points given on each line do not coincide with intersections of the line. So intersection is not part of this. So it's all kind of the most general case, let's put it this way, the most common rather case. Not general. All right? Now, now I would like to count how many different triangles can be formed using these points. All right? Okay. Now, um, I can form triangles by using points from different lines. I cannot use one line and have three points on it to form a triangle because all these points are on the same line, right? So they don't form triangles. So I have to introduce either two lines for three points or all three lines for three points, right? So let's just count them separately. If I want all my three points on the uh, uh, of the triangle to lie on three different lines. All right. Now, obviously, it depends on number one, which three lines out of n I choose, and there are number of combinations. Now, as soon as I have chosen my three lines, I have a freedom of building different triangles using the points lying one on one line, another on another line, and, and the third one on the third line, right? So I have k choices for the first point, k choices for the second, and k choices for the, for the third. Each one was each, so that makes it k times t k times k. So that's number of triangles which I can form uh, using three points and three different lines. All right, that's good. Now let's count how many triangles I can build using only two lines, right? So, let's say I have this line and this line. Well, first of all, I have to choose two lines, right? So, that's number of my combinations of two lines. Now, given a concrete two lines, I can build triangles using either two points on one and one point on another, or two points on this and one point on this, and that would make triangle. So it's either this way or or this way. Which means I really have to double the count of all triangles when two points on this line and one point on that line, right? So I double it. And now, how many different cases of this exist? Well, I have to choose two points here out of k, which is this, number of combinations of two points out of k, and I have to multiply by number of combinations of one point out of k, which is k. And that's the answer. On another hand, let's just approach the whole problem differently. Instead of counting inclusively 
which triangles really uh, belong to my category, um, I will choose differently. Let's say I'm connecting any three points out of whatever is given. So, how many points do I have? n times k, right? n lines k points on each. And I choose three points any way I want. So, this is a number of triplets, but not all of them uh, make up the triangles, right? So, let's exclude those which do not. Now, I have to exclude all the cases when three points are not making a triangle, and that's the only one when three points belong to the same line. So they can belong to this line, to this line, or to this line, doesn't really matter. There are n different choices for the line, and within the line, I can just check, uh, I, I can choose any three points out of k, which is this. And that would be a triplet which does not make a triangle. So any other combination of lines uh, and, and, and points. So when only two or one is a uh, point on, on, on each line, that actually makes a real triangle. So this is yet another formula. Well, question is, it's completely different, right? Um, all right, well, when I came up with these two formulas, I was kind of surprised. And then I decided basically to, to try to find out whether it's really the same or a different formula. Well, obviously, if it was <laughs> very different, uh, I wouldn't really tell it to, right? So it's the same. And if you want, you can basically do the calculation. What's Cn of 3? It's uh, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial, which is 6, times k cube plus n, n minus 1 over 2 times 2 times k, k minus 1 over 2 times k, so it's k squared. So that's what I have on the top. And on the bottom I have something similar. You can just, again, do whatever these, you know, whatever this formula actually calls for, you simplify and you will get exactly the same result. The same formula which contains as, as, a, as a polynomial, for instance, of f n and k. Um, I don't want to go through this. I, I did it once and, well, uh, obviously you can believe me, but I do suggest you to do it yourself. I think it's very educational to see that completely different formula actually is the same formula just presented in a slightly different way. All right, so, but, but that's what I, what I meant is that solving the problem using these two ways actually assured me that, uh, th that the solution is correct. Because otherwise, well, maybe I forgot this case, maybe I forgot that case to count, etc. That's not obvious. All right, number three. Okay, you have a number a natural number, n, which is greater than 3, and you would like to represent it as a sum of three different numbers, also natural numbers, starting from 1 and etc. And um, the different combinations, for instance, this combination and this combination, are considered to be different, so the order is important, right? So this is also sem 7, but these are not the same combinations. So I have to find out how many different combinations, oh by the way, and I, uh, identical numbers also allowed, like 2 plus 2 plus 3, that's fine too. Which is not the same as, let's say, 2 plus 3 plus 2, right? So. Order is important, um, but uh, other than that, there are no restrictions. So the question is how many different combination, representations of a natural number n as a sum of three um, natural numbers are possible. Okay, now, um, here is the way how you can do it again, inclusively and, and exclusively. Um, uh, let's do it this way. First of all, none of these numbers, a, b, and c, k, 
can be greater than n minus 2, right? Because if it's n minus 1, for instance, then even if these two are 1 and 1, we get more than n. So the maximum is a, b, and c, they are from 1 to n minus 2. Okay, let's do it one by one. Let's consider n is equal to n minus 2. One particular, the first member, for instance. How many different combinations of the second and third we have? Well, it can be either 1, 1, and basically none others. So it's one combination. If a is equal to n minus 1, I can have, uh, I, I'm sorry, minus 3. I go down, I decrease. So I have to um, make up 3 uh, from two numbers. So it's either 1, 2, or 2, 1. So it's two different choices, right? For a is equal to n minus 4, I have to make up the number 4 from two numbers. So it's either 1, 3, or 2, 2, or 3, 1. So it's three choices. So as you see, if a is equal to 1, the, mo the smallest one, I have to make up n minus 1 out of two numbers, which is 1, n minus 2, or 2, n minus 3, etc., or n minus 2, 1. So it's n minus 2 choices, right? b from 1 to n minus 2. So, to summarize, how many choices do I have? Well, I just have to summarize these numbers. So it's sum from 1 to n minus 2. Now, remember what it is? I don't. So, I always do it this way. Let's sum up all the numbers from 1 to k. And I remember that I have to just do it in a in an opposite order. So this is from 1 to k, this is from k to 1, this is the same thing. Now I sum them together vertically. I have 2s of k equals 1 plus k, k plus 1. 2 plus k minus 1, k plus 1, etc. k minus 1 plus, plus 2, k plus 1. k plus 1, k plus 1. So I have k plus 1 how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, k. So sum is equal to k, k plus 1 over 2. In our case, k is n minus 2, right? So the formula is n minus 2, n minus 2 plus 1, which is n minus 1, over 2, and that's the result. That's how many different pairs, uh, sorry, triplets, um, we can choose to sum, to have the, their sum equal to, uh, to n. All right, fine. Uh, I would like to approach it differently. Now, how differently? Um, in one of the prior lectures, I had a problem of actually presented an, an, an elegant solution to the following problem. If you have n objects and you divide them into three uh, piles of objects, how many different ways to divide um, them exist? Well, what I suggested is let's introduce two dividers or separators, whatever, and place it somewhere in between these objects. So we put all the objects in the line, right, and just put two separators somewhere. And they separate, this is the first pile of objects, this is the second, this is the third. Can we use exactly the same approach here? Let's write n ones. So the total number of these ones is equal to n. And then just put two lines somewhere. Well, it actually breaks into sum of 1 plus 2 plus 1 gives 4, right? 
So that actually is the way to do it. What's wrong with this methodology and how many times I can, how many different ways to distribute my n among these three piles are? Well, in this case, I have to basically find two different positions out of n plus 2, right? n ones and two separators, it gives me n plus 2 objects. And I have to find how many combinations out of these n plus 2 by 2 exist. So these are uh, all the different positions of these separators. And that actually breaks my number n into sum of three numbers. What's wrong with this approach? Well, approach is correct, except we do not really have to have zeros. Uh, the, the problem stated that the, the number is supposed to be natural. But this approach allows me to put separators here, which means the first pile is 1, the second one is empty, and the third one is 3. So it's 1 plus 0 plus 3. And that's not a good combination because it has 0. We have to exclude these combinations. Okay, so how can I exclude the combinations which are not really valid? Okay, let's just think about it. Well, in my sequence of three numbers, I can have either one zero or two zeros, right? And I would like to count separately how many combinations have one zero. Well, one zero can be either here or here or here. So it's, I have to subtract three times. And for instance, zero is in one particular place. Now, how many combinations of these exist? So it's either one and n minus one, two and n minus two, etc., n minus one, and 1, right? So it's n minus 1 combination which I have to subtract. So I first I have to choose which one of them is 0 and then all the different pairs of other two uh, which add up to n I count. Alright, now how many combinations are with two zeros? With two zeros I have basically three combinations, right? Zero, 0, n, 0, n, 0, and n, 0, 0, right? There are no other combinations with two zeros uh, which, give n, uh, which give n as a sum. So I have to subtract 3. Now, in this particular case, it's very easy to prove that this and this are exactly the same. The calculations are not as lengthy as in the prior cases. I mean, in the prior cases, it's also uh, valid uh, different representation. In this case, it's just a little bit easier. So, this gives me n plus 2 times n plus 1, n plus 2 minus 1, right? Over 2, minus 3 times n, minus 3n plus 3 minus 3. So, it's minus 3n. Right? And this is equal to this because uh, n square plus 3n uh, just one second plus 3n this is n square n square plus 3 no mine yes plus 3n plus 2 that's what it is right n plus 2 times n plus 1. That's what it is. I subtract 3n and that gives me 2 times 3 is 6. So it gives me this. Okay, how about this? n square minus 1 and 2, 3n and plus 2. Right, exactly the same thing. So these are the same formulas, just presented slightly different. All right. Again, I have chosen to use two different ways to prove this, and that's very important. And the last problem, which is, um, maybe it's less combinatorial, but anyway. Let's consider people are shaking hands with each other. All the people, the earth, whatever. Now, there are certain people who shook hands odd number of times. Odd number of handshakes. Now, my statement is that number of these people who shook hands 
odd number of times is actually even. Why? Well, let's consider. Every handshake is supposed to be, if I want to count how many handshakes all people have all together, I have to count each end handshake twice for one person and for another person. So the total number of handshake is even. Now, let's divide people into two categories. Those who made odd number of handshakes and those who made even number of handshakes. Well, those who made even number of handshakes, if I will summarize their handshakes, it would be even plus even plus even plus even, even, right? So, this is total number. Now, the number of people who are making even number of handshakes even. Now, what does it actually mean? That the total number of handshakes which these people made is also even, right? Because from total number of handshakes, I have to subtract the total number of handshakes made by people who made only even number of handshakes, and that would mean that would be, uh, result in the number of handshakes which made by people who made odd one. Now, so, my, my question is, if this number is odd, number of people who made odd number of shake, handshakes, then their sum would be odd, right? The odd sum, number of, the odd number of odd numbers added together is odd. So, it must be even. That's basically it. <laughs> All right, anyway, thanks a lot for your attention, good luck, and I do recommend you to go through these problems again on unizor.com, uh, and, uh, well, let's continue with more problems. I have a lot of problems in combinatorics for you. Thank you.